I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Yeah. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are oh, holding me. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free no indeed. No chains are holding no me. No chains are holding it's me. It's who I choose to it's be. It's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free no indeed. No chains are holding me. No chains me. are holding me.
the Lord, somebody. Come on and give him a great praise this morning. Are you free this morning? Glory to God. I appreciate God for being free indeed. Glory to God. Why don't you give him another great praise this morning? Oh, hallelujah. Thank God I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give God another great praise this morning, somebody. Hallelujah. Especially if you're free. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I appreciate God for another opportunity that he's given us. Thank God that we're back together one more time. I don't know about you, but I come to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Glory to God. Why don't you give God another great praise this morning? Glory to God. And why don't you help me celebrate such great leadership? Glory to God in the form of Apostle Herman L. Murray Jr. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and give God a great praise for our first lady, Lady Danielle Murray. Glory to God. Give God another great praise, somebody, for Evangelist Jones. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Why don't you give God a great praise for your sisters and your brother? Woo! You know, I'm going to miss my brother. Glory to God. But why don't you give Jesus a great big hand? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Give Jesus a great big hand. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I honor the memories of my brother. Praise the Lord. Elder Adrian Autry. Come on, give God a great praise for him. Glory to God. I know our hearts are heavy, but you know what? We still going to praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Would you remain standing? Play, praise the Lord. And let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, another opportunity that you've given us. Lord, we want to take time and tell you thank you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your love and kindness and your tenderness. Thank you for your compassion and your long-suffering. Thank you for your faithfulness toward us. But most of all, we thank you for loving us the way that you do. Lord, if it had not been for you, Lord, we wouldn't be here today. But we want to take time and tell you thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. Thank you for how you're blessing our leaders. Oh, God, with strength, God, with a renewing, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for how you're strengthening us as a church. God, we owe you the praise. We owe you the glory. We owe you the honor. Father, we ask you this morning that you come in and have your way like only you can. God, take charge of this service. Move by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, we ask that you deal with every vessel. Don't let us leave the way we came in. Anoint the woman of God as she preach your great word under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We ask that you save, heal, and deliver. We ask that you set free this morning. We ask it for breakthroughs like none of them. Oh God, and we give your name the praise the glory and the honor anoint the musicians as they play for your glory and for your honor anoint the choir as they sing for your glory in Jesus name I do pray let the people of God say amen come on say amen again oh hallelujah glory to God praise the Lord I'm going to ask that you remain standing praise the Lord as we go to the scripture reading praise the Lord we're going to come out of the book of Psalms Psalms chapter 34. Praise the Lord. We're going to read verse 1 through 8. Psalms chapter 34. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. And as we are accustomed to, I'll read the first, you read the second. We'll alternate and we will read verse 8 all together. Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 34, 34 and verse 1. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Congregation. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. 
congregation. Verse 5. They looked upon him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Congregation. Verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Praise the Lord. Verse 8 all together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Glory to God. Come on, give God a great praise this morning. Glory to God. Are you trusting in him? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You may have your places. We're going to call for Sister Erica Howard. Give God a great praise for her. Oh, Amen. Somebody say, oh, taste and see. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to Garland Full Gospel Holy Temple, where our leaders are none other than the Apostle Herman L. Murray, Jr. And our first lady is the beautiful Lady Danielle. Let's give it up for our leaders on today. Come on, girl, let's get excited on this morning. Praise God. We would like to welcome you here. Amen. At this time, if we have any guests visiting with us for the first time, would you please stand so that we may acknowledge you? Amen. Any guests in the building? Praise God. We all family on this morning. We'll give yourselves a hand. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Our service times are as follows. On Sunday school, uh, on Sunday, Sunday school begins at 9.45 a.m., not 9.46, in the main sanctuary only, and worship follows at 11 o'clock a.m., Sunday prayer uh, begins at 6 o'clock p.m. with evening worship to follow at 6.30 p.m. And our midweek family night service begins Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. with prayer preceding that at 7 o'clock p.m. Just a few announcements for your hearing on this morning. Sisterhood, your end of the year deadline is December 1st. Amen. Please direct all questions, amen, to me. If you have any questions about what I mean by that, just come see me after service. Praise God. On Friday night, we're scheduled to be with the Orange Full Gospel Holy Temple Church for the appreciation of Pastor Larry Brooks and First Lady Abigail Brooks. We're also scheduled to be with the Sherman Full Gospel for the appreciation of Pastor Joshua Shelton and First Lady Wendy Shelton. If you would like to send a love offering, please leave it here at the church and we'll ensure that it gets to the Orange and the Sherman Church families. Also, next Sunday is Second Sunday. We know what we do around here. We truly do love our pastor and First Lady, don't we? Amen. And Second Sunday is a time where we, the members of Full Gospel, have set aside to be a blessing to our leaders. We're asking everyone to join us next Sunday uh, with a $30 love gift to our man and woman of God. Amen. Also, attention all youth. If you desire to participate in this year's Youth Congress Convention with a song or poem or to be a speaker or if you just want to help in any way, please visit the app under the Members tab to fill out the form. And lastly, we will be having our Garland FGHT Family Fellowship Luncheon, amen, on Saturday, December the 9th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. there at Papado's Seafood Kitchen at 3520 Oak Lawn Avenue there in Dallas. The cost is $36 per person 12 and over and the payment due date is approaching don't wait to the last minute amen november 17th is your due date to secure your place amen and you may bring one guest amen each member may bring one uh, paid guest praise god amen and please let sister howard know if you haven't already done so if you plan on coming amen and those are all of the announcements. Again, welcome to Garland Full Gospel Holy Temple. We're here, we believe, in excellence pursued and holiness personified. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Amen. Do better than that. Give God some praise on this morning. Is God your everything? Come on, somebody, talk to me. Wave your hand if God is your everything. 
Yeah, Lord. Amen. He's our everything. I know he's my everything. I'm going to make it personal this morning. Put your hands together. Help us bless the name of the Lord. Come on. Oh, 
Lord, that heal me. My everything. My everything. My everything. He's my Savior. My everything. Soon coming King. My everything. He's my everything. My
Oh, he's peace with a troubled mind. Anybody found him to be priest on this morning? Anybody found him to be a way maker? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Bless his holy name. I bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He's my everything. My, my, my God. Yes, he is. When I feel like I'm all alone, he comforts me. He's my everything. He's my paraclete. He's the one that comes alongside of me. He's the one that dwells on the inside of me. He's my everything. He's my savior. He's my deliverer. He's my healer. Hallelujah. He is my way maker. He is my strong power. He's a refuge. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's my everything. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We enjoy the choir. Amen. Put those hands together for the choir. Certainly we enjoy them. We're moving right along. They'll be coming back to us shortly. The body of Christ. Amen. To change the hearts and the minds of people. Y'all can get quiet. Amen. The devil, did you know the devil will send people to church? Amen. The devil ain't got real people, but he'll send the counterfeits into the body of Christ. And that's the reason why. Amen. You got to be careful about who you yoke up with, even in the house of God. Amen. Everybody that's shouting and speaking in some kind of tongue ain't got the Holy Ghost. You still got folk that the devil has sent in to be a negative example. Amen. Before the eye of those young ones that are coming seeking a better life and a different walk. Amen. But you've got to be careful and you've got to know that that's not God. That's why we've got to preach to you the word. Amen. Because the word of God is a lamp and a light. Amen. It's going to shine on all of those motives that other people are trying to hide. And I don't care how good they talk. What you've got to learn how to do. Amen. It's measure their conduct by the word of God. <laughs> Oh, Lord, everybody that's speaking in tongues and trying to prophesy to you, amen, ain't doing so by the Spirit of God. The Bible says you try the Spirit, y'all. I'm trying to figure out if I got somebody here that know the Word. Amen, he says you've got to try the Spirit. I don't care, amen, if they look like they saved, try that Spirit. Lord, y'all ain't said if they prophesied, you ain't got to just submit to every word that folk trying to speak over your life. You try that Spirit. And how do you try the spirit, huh? By the word of God. Oh, God. Somebody said you try the spirit by the spirit. No. You try the spirit by the word of God. Because the word of God is already settled in the heaven. Isn't that what the scripture tells us? Amen. Psalms 119 and 89 says forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. If you don't like it, you can't do nothing with the word. Amen. The apostle used to tell us you got to go to heaven and change this word. And by the time you get there, changing it ain't going to be on your mind. Amen. So we try the spirit by the word of God. So what does that tell us? That tells us we got to know this word, don't it? Amen. You got to know what it says for yourself. And that's why I feel bad for people. Amen. That say I can't go to church because I know this about people and I've seen people do that. They don't know the word. Because if they knew the word, they would realize the Bible never said, amen, measure your life by people. He said Christ left us an example. Oh, look at somebody and tell them Christ is my example. I ain't worried about who lying. I ain't worried about who cheating. Amen, I ain't leaving the church because of shysters. Amen, Christ is my example. Thank you, kind spirit. He, he's who I look to. Amen. He's the one that lights me up. Amen. He's the one that gives me direction and, and gives me instruction. Amen. He's my role model. And I don't care what else is going on in the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm looking to Christ. He is the author and the finisher.
for the Lord. Come on, you can get, get with us and help us sing this on today. Oh! 
today. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. Now, if this was Elder Archer, he would say, come on and give Jesus a great big hand up in here. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Amen. You may be seated on this morning. Truly, we honor God. Amen. For the presence that we feel in the place on this morning. God is a good God. How many know he's a good God? Amen. God is a real good God. And I thank him on today. I love him. I magnify him. I appreciate him. Amen. I love the Lord. He makes me happy. Amen. How many know the Lord will make you happy? Amen. He is the center of my joy. How many have God as the center of your joy? Amen. Amen. I don't care what's going on in my life. If I can think about the Lord and Savior. Amen. He is the center of my joy. Amen. I love him above all above anyone, above anything. I love the Lord on today. Amen. I just honor him. I love to be able to say something. Amen. For the Lord. I love to be able to worship the Lord. I love absolutely everything about the Lord. Amen. He is my all in all. I mean that. Amen. I thought I knew real joy, but it wasn't until I got saved. And I let, and, and let the Lord have his way in my life that I experienced real joy. See, a lot of people will get behind this sacred desk and they will say to you that, that they have so much joy down on the inside. But I'm saying it and I really mean it. Not saying that nobody else does, but I really mean it because I have had God to come into my life and fix situations that were out of my control. I've had an experience with the Lord. I have an, I've had an experience with God. See, you can't tell me nothing about him. You can't make me doubt him. I don't care how bad I want to come out of something and I feel like I'm still in it. For some reason, I still just have something to be grateful for. Amen. If you could just look back over your life, the things that God have done for you in the past, that ought to help you right now in your present situation. I'm talking to somebody. What you've been through and what God has brought you through ought to help you right now in your present situation. Amen. And I just love to, amen, I love to brag on God. Amen. He's my everything. He's my joy in time of sorrow, like they were saying. He's my hope for tomorrow. He is my everything. If he's your everything, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for our pastor. Amen. Come on and clap your hands for the best pastor we know. Our overseer, the apostle Herman Lobius Murray. Amen. And in the memory of our precious assistant pastor, Elder Autry, clap your hands. Amen. For a wonderful man of God whom we know 
made it over. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Exodus. We're going to go to that 17th chapter, and we will start reading at the 8th verse, and we will go all the way to the 16th verse. That is Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. Verse 8 says, Then Amalek, then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out and go out, fight with Amalek. He says, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And verse 10 says, So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And verse 11 says, And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. How many know you need somebody that's going to hold you up when things get heavy? Am I talking to somebody when times get hard and rough? How many know you need people in your corner that's going to hold you up? Amen. And verse 13 says, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Verse 14 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will, sure, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Verse 15 says, And Moses, Moses built an altar and called the name of of it, Jehovah Nisi. And verse 16 in our last scripture says, For he said, Because the Lord had sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Come on and put your hands together for the word of God. I mean, Elder Archie would say, That's all right for me. But put your hands together for God. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to clap loud for a person and then give God a halfway hand clap. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. I came to tell you, if you give God most of it, if you give God all of it, really, amen, he going to bless you. Amen. You can clap your hands for people who sung a real good song and you can get up and shout for them and, and, and cheer for them and ain't nothing coming. But when you clap for Jesus, when you cheer for Jesus, now am I talking to somebody today? Something is coming your way. Amen. Verse 11, we're taking our text from verses 11 and, and 12. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Amen. Now, now most times when people preach from these verses, the topic is going to be keep your hands up or something like that. But we're not going to do that today. We was on our way, amen, to church this morning, and we were talking about how you can take a, a message or a, 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 um, a verse in the scripture, and, and you can call it anything just about, not anything, but you can, it, can be, it can mean more than one thing. You can preach from the same two verses 
and have a different revelation. Amen. But we do want to keep our hands up. Amen. But help me today. Help me announce my text today. Look at your neighbor and say, we're all in this together. Look at them again and say, we're all in this together. Amen. I'm not going through what I'm going through by myself. Amen. Because my sister has already been through it and she's going to help me. She's going to coach me out of it. Amen. Look at your name and say, we're all in this together. Amen. As I was thinking about this this morning, getting ready for church, I began to think about Moses and how he brought the children of, of uh, Israel out of bondage from, from Egypt. And, and I was thinking about Moses and I was thinking about Joshua. Amen. And Moses led the people out of Egypt. And you would think that Joshua was getting ready to get these great um, uh, instructions after they've been through many things, many hard trials. And, 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 and I was, you, you, we would think if, if Moses needs his hands held up, if he needs help, you would think that they've been going for a very long time. But as I was thinking about this and I began to research it, they got into this war just two months after they came out of Israel. And then I began to think about why does God begin to bring people on the scene that, they're, that they're, they ain't going to even be used for, for many, many years to come. And then I think about our leader, our, our overseer, you know how he walked with his granddad for many, many years before his time would come. And so I was thinking about this, and sometimes I want to say this to somebody because I don't know if this is for you, but sometimes God will have you training the person that's getting ready to take your position. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. And I hear some of my friends, and I hear people say a lot, I'm training this person. They, they won't even give me the job. I know how to do this. And I'm training them to take this job, or I'm training this person to take my job. But I, but, but I began to think about it uh, as, as it reflects on this scripture. And we can note here that God uses us to issue in or to usher in great anointings. And this is what we're going to talk about today when we talk about Moses and when we talk about Joshua. And guess what? Moses was important. Don't you get it twisted. If you training somebody, you are very important. Don't feel like because they're getting ready to shine in one area that God is not, is through using you. Amen. God is not through using you. And when we think about Apostle Obias Mary and Apostle Herman Mary, Apostle Obias Mary allowed our overseer today to, to do great and wonderful things. And he said back. And he allowed it to happen. And that's how we know that God has our whole life in his hands, in his control. And if you would just trust him. Amen. Because Apostle O'Bills Murray was sitting back in his chair and Apostle Herman Murray, he was an apostle at the time. He was evangelist and he was bishop. And he was going for it. And it took an Apostle O'Bills Murray for Apostle Herman Murray to be who he is today. Amen. And we're going to get, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it's just amazing how, and I'm going to hurry up. It's just amazing how you think about Moses and they just came out of Egypt and only two months later, he's getting ready to train somebody that's going to take people over into the promised land. Amen. God knew that and he just knew God knows your, your beginning from your ending. He knows your ending from your beginning. He knew that the people were going to get on Moses' nerves. He already knew. See, see, the thing, the secret is, is you, are, you know, you, you don't know. It's a secret to you. But God already knows the decisions that you're going to make. He already knows what you're going to do when your back is against the wall. And since I just gave you that bit of information, your job is to say, Lord, if you already know my beginning from my end, I want to do your will. I want to stay in the center of your will. But how many know it's hard leading God's people? It's hard. If you are a director, amen, it's hard leading the choir. 
If you are head musician, it's hard leading the other musicians. If you're over the usher board, it's hard leading all the ushers. It is hard leading God's people. You got to love this job. Because do you know how many different opinions are in this room right now? However many people are in here, that's how many different opinions we have right now. And you got to be called by God to work with God's people. And Moses was called by God because you know his history. You know how he got in the position that he was in. But God knew that Mo, the people were going to upset Moses. And God loved Moses so much that he didn't make it to this promised land, but he made it to the promised land. Amen. And sometimes God's going to have to take you when you when you are at your best place. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Because he wants you to make it to the promised land. So Moses was preparing Joshua even probably before he really knew he was preparing Joshua. And so Moses, he's telling Joshua in our scriptures today that he's going to go down and fight. And I'm going to stay up here and hold up my hand. Okay, let's get in this word on today. When God's people work together, we can accomplish anything. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Amen. It is hard to accomplish things when people are constantly fighting against you. But when we work together, somebody say, when we work together. Amen. We can do anything, anything. Sometimes the hardest thing for us to do is ask people for help too. You know anybody who hates to ask for help? You always want them to see you on the top. I'm not that person. If I don't know how to do it, I'm going to ask for help. I don't care if it's an itty bitty baby. If this baby know how to get done what I need done, I'm going to ask for help. Amen. I, I can be, I tell everybody all the time, I'm a good follower. I don't have to be in charge. I thank God for being a good follower. Amen. And so some people, they find it hard to ask for help. But Moses did not find it hard. He says, I'm going to stand on top of this mountain or this hill, and you're going to go down and you're going to fight. Amen. We don't want people to know, though. I mean, sometimes we're going through a hard spell in our life, a hard thing, and and we don't want people to know what we're going through. Everybody's not out to get you. Look at somebody say, everybody's not out to get you. See, if you are surrounded by true saved people, th- those people aren't out to get you. Amen. Sometimes you just need to change your circle. Amen. Sometimes you just need to stop putting so much trust in people who don't care about your ending. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. You have chosen that one person that you want to be your ride or die, but God never said that that was your ride or die. Amen. And when they don't come through, you still continue to put trust and faith in people that don't come through. How many know doing the same thing is insanity? Amen. And if you keep trusting yourself with the same people and they keep keep breaking your heart, how many know you are insane? You got to change your circle. Amen. And when you change up, don't worry about when you got to switch up what people going to say about you. Amen. If you're not good for me and I've learned my lesson, I'm going to switch up. Amen. I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm going to do what God is telling me to do. But sometimes, amen, we look for people to be our source and our help. And God is telling you, that's not who I have for you. And then sometimes you are so uh, bold in, in, or, or so, I don't want to say arrogant. You just don't want people to know that you're going through. You want to be the one that can always come through. You're the strong person, and, and, you, and sometimes because you are always the strong person, you feel like I can't, I can't be the, the one that go and, and ask for help. You know, some people, some people are so good to so many people, and they, you look around sometimes. I know it's some of you in here. You look around sometimes when you're going through, you, you can't find nobody to put your head on. You can't find nobody to lean on because the people, the people have been leaning on you all this time. And sometimes you can't even trust them because you know how you know how fragile they are. You know? And so I came to tell somebody, if you're the strong person, there is somebody for you to lean on. Amen. God have equipped somebody to be your confidant. On this earth, God have equipped somebody to be your confidant. Amen. So some of us, we are so, we're so um, 
unwanting to tell people what we're going through. And so we'll stay in silence and we'll struggle. You'll break down almost on the inside. Amen. You get just about to give up on the inside because you're going through. And you don't have anybody you can talk to or ask for help. Today we're talking about Moses and Joshua and how they worked together. Somebody is in your life that God have, God have placed in your life or he's placed, he has placed on this earth to be your confidant, to be that person that can help you, to be that person that can strengthen you. First Peter 4 and 12 says, concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. And this is where the enemy wants to fight you. Because some of you just don't want to talk about what you're going through, but some of you are going through and, 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 and the enemy is really telling you that you're the only one going through this. And can't nobody help you because they don't understand. And if you tell them, they're not going to understand. The enemy will convince you that nobody could possibly understand. And so he'll tell you there is no reason to seek for help. We're talking about being helpers one to another today. Amen. How many know the enemy will convince you, amen, to stay in silence and to struggle in silence? And the worst thing you can do is listen to the devil. The worst thing you can do is, is take yourself away from people who's willing to talk you back off the ledge. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. Because I know when I had my experience, God, I, I, I'm telling you, even when I was going through, I knew who to ask for help. I knew who to call on somebody that was a little bit more stronger than I was. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. And so the enemy will convince you that, that you're all by yourself and nobody understands what you're going through. But turn to your neighbor and say he wants to isolate you. Now, this word is for somebody today. And I hope that you're in the building I hope that you are taking heed because the enemy wants to isolate you. He don't want you to ask for help. He don't want you to tell nobody because I've been telling them the same thing over and over. I've been going through the same thing over and over. I'm too embarrassed to talk about it again. And so I'm just going to suffer in silence. Look at your neighbor and say, he wants to isolate you. Look and say, you, 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 he wants to isolate you. Now, everybody, I'm going to tell you, he wants to isolate you. And so whoever I'm talking to, I'm talking to you. He wants to isolate you. He wants to put you by yourself. Amen. And that's the first thing. You know what the devil is? He's an abuser. Did you know he's like, he's like that man that beats his wife over and over again? He's an abuser because the enemy don't stop fighting, do he? And he don't stop attacking you. He's an abuser. Amen. And the first thing an abuser wants to do they, to the victim is convince them that their family members don't even care nothing about them. And so you don't even need to call them. He tries to keep them. He will drive a wedge between you and your family. And the enemy wants to drive a wedge between you and God. He does not want you to have strength enough to ask God to come in and help you with what you're going through. Am I talking to somebody today? That the enemy has, has tried to, he has tried to hold you fast and keep you from having a commun from having communion with God, from having conversation with God. And that's why I tell you it is so important for you to have a relationship with God. Because if I have a relationship with you, I talk to you every day. Amen. I say something to my husband every day. Amen. I talk to my son every day. I talk to my mom every day. Why? Because I have a relationship with these people. But even if I don't talk to them, guess who I'm going to talk to every day? I'm going to talk to God. Hallelujah. When I get up out the bed, when I open my eyes, I realize that didn't happen without God. And you know what I say to him? Thank you, God. Thank you for bringing me to another day. Amen. I talk to him all day long, just as if he was sitting right in front of me. I talk to God. And so your enemy, want, the enemy wants to isolate you and keep you from having a relationship with God because he doesn't want you to come out of what you're in. But I came to serve the devil notice today. We are coming out and we're coming out together. Amen. We have to resist the devil. How many know that you have to resist him and he will flee? If you don't put up any resistance, he's going to have his way with you. Am I talking to somebody today? 
you got to put up resistance. He can't stay, amen, where he's being suffocated and smothered. Amen. You know, the enemy wants to be the center of attention. And if you don't allow the enemy to be the center of attention, you begin to talk about how God is going to bring you out. The enemy has to flee. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. If you begin to talk to God about what you're going through, the enemy doesn't have a lot of time. He doesn't have any wiggle room to get in there and begin to talk to you about what God ain't going to do for you. Amen. God will bring you out if you give God your attention, if you give God your time, if you give God your conversation. But I know what it's like to know that God is able to bring you out, but still give the enemy time. And we don't have time to give the enemy any of our time. Amen. So the one thing that you need to do is starve the enemy of the attention that he is seeking when you're going through. He is seeking your attention. Amen. When people talk to you too much, don't you get tired? And she ain't going to shut up. Wish she just shut up. And that can be people that's closest to you. You know, sometimes people just have a whole lot to say. They got a whole lot on their heart. And you're just looking like, Really? Why you don't feel like that when the devil talking to you? Why you don't get sick of listening to him? Why is it that he can keep talking and you never say, Ooh, you going long. You got a lot to say. I remember, uh, she's not here today. Sister Tashara's not here today. But uh, I was in the car with her, her mom, Miss Juanita, and, and Hayden. And Tashara was on one that day. And she was just the talking and the talking and the talking. And it's, you know, she's a, she's a principal, so it's a lot to talk about with these children. So she was just a talking and a talking and a talking. And, and, and then Miss Juanita, she says to me, she full, ain't she? She got a whole lot to say. And we just fell out. Me and Miss Juanita just fell out. Amen. Because sometimes people are just be talking, talking, talking. You just trying to figure out when you going to be quiet. Well, how come we ain't like that with the devil? Why we can't, why can't we tell the enemy, I'm sick of listening to you? Because he ain't ever telling you nothing good. Has the devil ever told you anything good? Does he want anything good for you? Well, you ought to get sick of listening to him. Am I talking to somebody today? I'm going to go on and get to where, where I'm going this morning. Amen. But sometimes you just need to show the enemy who's boss. And you know, I hate for people to think they're getting over on me. That's one of my pet peeves to see they really think they're getting over on me. You know what? But I even hate the devil to think he's getting over on me. I hate when he comes to my mind and try to tell me what God is not going to do. Amen. Because I know if he did it before, he can do it again. I have a history with God. I have a, he has his track record with me. And I trust him. And when the enemy tries to take my trust away from God, I got something to say about that. Amen. He should have got me back when I was real low, but I made it out all right. And because I made it out all right, the enemy can't stop me. He can talk all he wants. Sometimes I am discouraged, but how many know, amen, when you are discouraged, if you begin to think on the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for you, amen, he'll bring you out of a discouraged place. Amen. 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 The Bible says, behold, I give unto you power. Amen. It does not say, behold, I give unto the enemy power. But he said, behold, I give unto you power. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. Moses is God's servant. Amen. And he has trusted Moses to take his people out of Egypt, out of bondage. And now they are faced with a surprise attack. Talking about where we are in scripture today. They are, they are two months out. I mean, you know, the enemy just don't ever stop. They just got through running. They tired. But how many know you can just get through going, going through one trial and you think you're going to sit down and rest from that trial and here comes something else? How many know that's how the devil is? He wants to wear you out. He wants to wear you down. Amen. So they just come out of Egypt. And here's this surprise attack. It's unprovoked by Amalek. Now, how many know don't nothing catch God by surprise? Amen. Because if he had to let the children of Israel sit down too long, because you already know they was always showing out. 
Amen. If he had let them sit down too long with no problems, what nobody going to ever turn back to him? What nobody ever going to pray? Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. So God will allow you to go through some things because he wants to keep you praying. He wants to keep you on your knees. And I figured out that's exactly what he do for me. It's one thing to the next because he don't want me to have no moment where I feel like there's peace and safety and nothing can ever happen. And then I get carnal and lax. I like when I don't I don't like going through trials, but I like when God keeps me on my face and keep me on my knees praying because I don't want to be surprised by the enemy's attack. Amen. And so Moses has brought them out of Israel. I mean, out of Egypt and the children of Israel out of Egypt. And now they are faced with this surprise attack. Look at somebody and say the devil stay busy. Tell them again, the devil stay busy. Amen. Just when you think you're ready to exit one trial, like I just said, you're getting ready to go right back into another one. Amen. You got the rent paid this month. Now the car note is due. Amen. You got the car note paid. Now the kids' tuition is due. Amen. You got the kids' tuition done. Now they're getting ready to go on a senior trip. Every time you look around, it's something. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. But in our lesson today, we learned that Moses' hands got heavy. And he had Aaron and her to step up to the plate. Tell your neighbor, we're in this together. Amen. Now we're getting ready to get into our lesson. Aaron and her took great care and support of Moses when he could not stand. Amen. He, he was holding his hands up. He was praying for the people. And he got tired. How many ever prayed till you got tired? You ain't prayed until you done got tired. You ain't prayed until you don't have no more words to say. You haven't prayed until you get to the point where, Jesus, you know what I'm going through. God, I don't even have the words. You ain't prayed until you prayed that prayer. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. We're all in this together. I want you to understand that. Amen. And when he could not hold up his hands, he would have them held up. Moses, the man of God, is glad for the assistance. He is like me. If I'm tired, I'm excited for some assistance. I try to get people to come up and show up at my workouts all the time. Why? Because when I'm tired, the focus is on them. Because they may may need a little more attention than I do. And the focus is taken off of me and then on them. So if I ever invite you to my workout, it's because I believe that you're going to take the focus off of me so I can take a break. How many know ain't nothing wrong with that? Am I talking to, have you ever worked out till you wish that you had some workout for some people with you to take the focus off of you? I'm talking to somebody today. That's how it is when you're going through trials. When you're going through things, you want, you want the enemy, you want him to just back up. Don't you want him to just back up sometime? Get out of me. Hallelujah. And when he could not hold his hands up, Aaron, his brother, and her began to help him. So this is a lesson for us all. I mean, this is a lesson for us all. We should not be shy either of asking for help. You think Moses, you think he was shy to ask, Amalek, um, ask uh, Joshua to go fight with Amalek? Joe, uh, Moses said, oh, now he's the warrior, he's the fighter, but I'm the prayer warrior. How many know you can, you can be a warrior in battle or you can be a prayer warrior? Amen. And it's going to take that prayer warrior to bring you out. Amen. So this is a lesson for us all, that we are helpers one to another, and we have to know that God is our help. Amen. The Bible tells us that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Amen. You can't feel like you're in this thing all by yourself, but you have to, you have to understand that you can't handle it by yourself. Am I talking to somebody today? Jeremiah 32 and 17 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. If God made heaven and earth, why do you feel like your situation is so complicated? He created everything out there, up and down, but your situation is too hard? Am I talking to somebody today? There is nothing too hard for God. 
Luke says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Do you believe the word of the Lord? Amen. These verses reinforce that the belief that through faith in God and strength and his strength, even the most challenging things become possible. Whatever you're going through, even that most challenging thing is possible with God. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we're in this together. Amen. So Moses' hands were raised, uh, and it was symbolic to prayer and intercession. So Moses' hands being raised was symbolic to prayer and intercession. And what's important to note here is that every battle won involved prayer. Am I talking to somebody today? Every battle you came through, you had to pray about it. Because you would begin to think that you had the power. Amen. So every battle won comes through prayer. As a child of God, that is your weapon. And if you don't know how to pray, I'm sorry for you because you don't have any weapons. Your weapon is the prayer that you pray to the mighty God because he is the deliverer. So when you're going through, it's not you, it's not your mama, it's not your brother, but it's God. It's God that you need to talk to. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Did you know that your weapons are mighty through God? It's not mighty through you. I want you to know that you can't do anything by yourself about your situation. I'm talking to somebody today. You think you smart enough to come out of what you're in? You think you strong enough to come out of what you're in? I came to tell you you're not. You think you're pretty enough to come out of what you're in? I came to tell you you are not. As pretty as you are, you still can't help yourself. It's going to take a God to bring you out. Being pretty, it'll do a whole lot of things, but it is going to take God to bring you out. It is imperative that you learn how to pray. Look at somebody and say, it's imperative. It is important that you learn how to pray. I mean, if you don't want a prayer life, then that means you don't want to come out of the situation that you're in. And in, the, in our story today, Moses had a prayer life. When, when every, every time we turn around, Moses was up in the mountains talking to God, getting instruction concerning the people. And, and, and you can look at their lives and tell they weren't praying. He's up there praying, but they weren't praying because they were getting into all kind of stuff. Every time he went off to be with God, he'd come back. Here they go. Building calves, building, building other little gods and, and, and doing all kind of ungodly stuff every time he was up in prayer. Amen. Matthew 18 19, 18, 19 through 20 says, again, I say unto you that if two of you, and we're talking about prayer, shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask it, it shall be done for them. Amen. Our Father is going to do for us what we ask. But it's through prayer. Am I talking to somebody today? It's through prayer. I can touch and agree with you. And if I say I'm touching and agreeing with you, I'm agreeing with the prayer that you prayed. Amen. You know, if I'm touching and agreeing with you, but you ain't praying and you the one with the, with the problem, God ain't getting ready to do nothing. But it's going to take prayer. Am I talking to somebody? We're talking about Moses. He was the prayer warrior. The verses express the confidence that we pray in alignment with God's will. And we know that he hears us when we pray. Amen. These scriptures that I've just read to you illustrate the belief that prayer is powerful. It is a powerful means of communicating with God. God is our help. And if we don't communicate with him, then we obviously ain't, aren't serious about coming out of what we're in. I, that's, I want to stop right there. If you haven't prayed about it, think about that thing you're going through. If you haven't prayed about it, but you've just been talking about it, you're not real serious about coming out of it. You're just playing. You like going through. You like carrying that thing with you. You're not serious because you're just talking about it. How many know just talking about something is not praying? I'm talking about I'm going through. I'm talking about I'm struggling, but I never said, God, you see this. God, you know the strength that I have, but I know the strength that you have. God, you know, I know that you can do anything but fail. If you haven't said some of that stuff, you ain't trying to come out. If you just telling everybody, 
And then you said, I want you to agree with me. Agree with what? What you say? What you tell him? Did you tell him something? Well, what am I agreeing with? Because I can't agree with something that had not been said. I can't agree with you if you have not said to God, I want out of this. If you say I want out, then I agree with you. But I can't agree with you just telling me what your problem is. I'm not God. But he will be able to bring you out. Am I talking to somebody today? We ain't shouting this morning. But we coming out of some stuff. And we're going to learn our role. Either we a warrior in, in prayer or we a warrior in battle. But we coming out today. Amen. And I, de- I declare some of us are both of them. I'm both of them. I don't back down from a fight. You bring it to me, it's on. Am I talking to somebody today? Don't bring me no fight and expect me to sit there and take what you give me. I'm a fighter by nature. And I ain't never had no big fights. But I don't take nothing off of nobody either. If you wrong, you wrong, I'm going to say you wrong. If you bother me, I'm going to tell you you bothering me. And if you bother, I'm going to tell God about you bothering me. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. You got to be a warrior in prayer and in battle. Amen. You can't be no soldier that sit down and not ever get up to help. And you go to the back of the line. You're going to get all of us killed. But you got to be able to fight and pray. Am I talking to somebody today? If you're on my team and you don't have a prayer life, you get to the back of the line. Because if I know the enemy that like I know him, he's going to come in like a flood. And everybody up on the front of the line, you got to be able to pray. You got to be able to call on Jesus in 0.1 seconds or quicker. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. You can't be getting ready. You got to already be ready. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you got to already be ready. Am I talking to somebody today? You can't, get, you can't be winding up. You got to be ready. When you walk out of these doors, you got to be ready because you don't know what you're getting ready to face. You don't know what you're going to face on your job tomorrow. You got to go in on your job already ready. Am I talking to somebody today? You got, some of y'all got to walk in your houses already ready. Because you already know the enemy waiting on you to get home to get on your nerves. And you got to already be ready. You got to go in and say, I've been prayed up, sir. Sir, don't start with me today. I'm telling you right now, I feel real good. And God is fighting for me today. You don't want to mess with me today. I'm talking to somebody today. You walk, you kick the door in, and you tell them, don't start, nothing won't be none. Don't start, none won't be none. Am I talking to somebody today? Because either I'm about to pray for you, or I'm about to fight you, one or the other. Amen. I don't have to do that when I go home. Thank God for that. Amen, amen. But you got to be able to pray, and you got to be able to fight. Amen. The scriptures illustrate the belief that prayer is a powerful means that God have given to us. Now, Joshua's role. Somebody would say Joshua was the real MVP. I don't think he was, and I know he wasn't. Joshua wasn't the real MVP because why? Uh, Because when Moses' hands were down, they were getting beat up. They were getting whooped when Moses' hands were down. The real MVP had the prayer life. The real MVP was the intercessor. Am I talking to somebody today? And so you can't be so big about the stuff that you can do because bodily uh, exercise profited little. Am I talking to somebody today? You got to have a prayer life. And I talk about it all the time about having a prayer life because I know what God did for me. All I can tell you is what he did for me. I don't know what he did for you, but I know what he did for me. And it wasn't until I prayed and I prayed through that God brought me out. Amen. And so you might think that Joshua was the MVP because he was the one that went to battle. But when Moses' hands were down, he was getting beat up. All of them. In war, in battle. They were getting, they were getting their lunch handed to him. But then when his Moses, when Moses' hands were stretched high, God was doing a work. And how many know you can keep your hands up? And God will work for you. Am I talking to somebody today? Joshua was manpower. He was willing and he was available. I'm not trying to make light of Joshua either because 
Moses might not have known at the time. God may not have given him uh, instruction on why Joshua was going to become important later on. And I'm not going to take you there, but Joshua was very important later on to take them over into the promised land. But Joshua's obedience to Moses was partly due to his recognition of Moses' experience with wisdom. I can follow you if I know you got a prayer life. If you have a prayer life and you have a real good prayer life and you tell me to do something, I'm probably going to do it. Why? Because I know you have a prayer life. So Joshua had to be obedient. So that was important. How many know obedience is important? Amen. Amen. Moses had led Israel's, the Israelites through many challenges and had strong relations. He had a strong relationship with God. Amen. Joshua's willingness to follow this experienced leader contributed to his overall success. And I'm going to put a little point right here. Some of you who aren't obedient to those that are in leadership, that contributes to your success. Why you haven't made it where you're trying to go is because you're disobedient. I'm not talking to, 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 to you unless I'm talking to you. So don't take, take what's yours. But if you're not obedient, you cannot receive what God has for you. And so Joshua was willing to be obedient. We know that Moses was the prayer warrior and Joshua was the, he was battling in, in the war. He went down to fight. He did the physical part of it. And the reason why he could accept the challenge is because he had seen the work of Moses. He had seen God move through Moses. He had seen how they came across the Red Sea. He had seen those things. He had heard those things. And in our scripture, it tells them, it told them to, to take this opportunity to use it as a memorial for Joshua. Amen. For him to remember how God performed for them. Amen. He marked that time. Amen. And somebody might be thinking that Moses just held his hands up. But, but you got to understand that there is, there is something powerful when your hands are up. It's something powerful about holding your hands up. And, and yesterday when I, I began to, I was very heavy, as, as all of us were very heavy on yesterday. But I came, to, I, I mean, I declare that God came through when we begin to praise the Lord. When we begin to lift our hands. God did something for us. Amen. It lifted that heaviness off of us. It did something for us because we all know, amen, where Brother Autry is and in, in, in the stories that they told. We began to hold our hands up and we began to point our hearts towards God. And I came to tell somebody today, when you hold your hands up and point your heart towards God, he's going to work your situation out. Am I talking to somebody? You can't, you can't. You can't praise him with your hands down and with your head down. You got to praise him with your hands up and your heart pointed and lifted to God. Amen. Your, God, your heart got to be pointed and lifted to God knowing that God is able to bring you through whatever you're going through. Amen. You got to be able to have a prayer life where you can talk to him and tell him, God, I know that you're able to bring me out of this situation. God, I know you're able to lift up my bowed down head and you're able to lift this burdened heart of mine. God, I know that you're able to make this way, but you got to be able to lift your hands and your heart towards God. Somebody got to lift your hands and your heart towards God. And know that he's the only thing. He's the only way that you're going to come out of what you're in. Amen. If you're going through in your mind, it's going to take God to bring you out. Amen. Some of us have been through some great things. And when we think about, amen, the things that we've been through, it makes us very heavy. But how many know when you think about how God has brought you through? Amen. You used to go through, amen, you, you, you went through some terrible things. Some bad things happened to you. But when you begin to think about God and how good God is and how he brought you from a mighty long way and how that thing did not have, amen, it did not take you over and it did not take you out, but you still have strength to raise your hands. You still have a mouth to say, Lord, I thank you. You still have a voice to say, God, bring me through. You still got a voice to say, I appreciate you for bringing me hallelujah you got to be able to pray and fight because see the enemy don't he don't play fair he don't fight fair he fight a dirty fight 
And the only way to battle with the enemy is through prayer. The only way to battle with the enemy is to have a relationship with God. The only way to battle with the enemy is to know that God can do anything but fail. The only way to battle with the enemy is to know, amen, that the enemy was kicked out of heaven. And that God has reign and dominion and he rules over everything. You got to know the God that you serve. You got to know that when you go into battle, that God is going to go into battle with you. You got to surround yourself with people who know the Lord. Amen. You got to surround yourself with people who can pray when you're going through, who can hold your hands up, who can fight with you. Am I talking to somebody today? The enemy wants to, he wants to destroy you. He wants to keep you isolated and by yourself. And he wants you to think that you don't have the appropriate prayer life with God. But I came to tell somebody, you got to prove him wrong. You know how we love to prove people wrong? People are just people. But when you get, when you get a, 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 a taste for proving the enemy wrong, because he's talking all the time. And if you say to the enemy, you are a liar, and you begin to talk to God about what the enemy is saying, and God begins to bring you out, then you have that thing. You have, you can say, see, I told you. You tried it, and I told you God was going to do it. You got to be able to tell him, you, you not today, devil. I'm not going through that today. How many know that he's under your feet? See, you got to really know that. I'm talking to somebody, you don't really know the power that you have. And see, the reason why you're not acting out the power that you have is because you don't know you have it. Why don't you know you have it? It's because you're not talking to God. You're talking to everybody but God. Am I talking to somebody today? See, I'm going to be that friend that tells you, did you pray about this? I mean, what did God say? I say this to people that I'm close to. And if you can't answer me back with what God said, then you ain't even in his will at this point. Because you're going to know what God said about it if you talk to him about it. Am I talking to somebody today? Amen. So you have to understand how good God is. Amen. And you got to understand that you, you're weak without him. And it's not about your talent. It's not about what you can do. Amen. But it's about what God can do. And Joshua, he was that, uh, the one that went into battle. He had the physical ability to go. But Moses had the power of prayer. And because Joshua was obedient and he trusted Moses. How many know we're, we're in this together? Amen. I, I, if I'm the one that's going to pray, you the one that's going to fight. And how many know we're a good team? Am I talking to somebody that I ain't better than you? You ain't better than me. We working together. And that's what we have to be as a church. We have to work together. I'm almost finished. Amen. I was thinking about David. Amen. He was a great warrior. But how many know David continued to talk to God? He, he wasn't a great warrior without talking to God. 1 Samuel 17 and 37, say, 36 through 37 says, David says to Saul, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, see, David had some kind of conversation. He had some kind of, he knew who he served. He, he said, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Now, David, he knew what he was getting ready to do to Goliath because he had defied the armies of the living God. He knew the living God. He knew he was going to have the strength to do what it was that needed to be done. Amen. Verse 37 says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistines. You can't have that kind of confidence in God without talking to him. You can't have that kind of confidence in nobody without talking to them. Amen. David was a prayer warrior too. He was a warrior in battle and he was a prayer warrior. Amen. So tell somebody it only happens after prayer. You're not going to be great unless you're a prayer warrior. Prayer warriors first. And if you're a prayer warrior first, then you can be a warrior in battle. Zechariah 4 and 6 says, not by 
might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. I don't care how strong you are. It ain't going to happen unless God gives you the victory. I'm almost finished. Amen. This lets us know that we can have no victory without prayer. Moses represented prayer and a connection to God, while Joshua represented strength and obedience. Joshua and the troops alone were no match for the Amalekites, because if they were, when Moses' hands went down, they'd still be winning. But they were no match for the Amalekites. And I came to tell somebody today, the thing that you're up against, you are no match for it. And the only reason why you haven't been taken out is because you have a prayer life. I'm talking, that's a, that's a blessing. That's a real compliment. I just gave you a compliment. Because what you're going through is able to take you over but God. But the prayer life that you have. And if you are here today and you don't have a prayer life, that's why you're getting beat up. you like Joshua with, the, with his army fighting the Amalekites while Moses' hands are down. That's where you are right now. If you're not winning, it's because your prayer life is not where it needs to be. Somebody just got mad about that. Why does that anger you? Are you too tired to pray? Is the, if you know that's the enemy that tells you, you just uh, let me just go roll, let me just get up in this bed. I'm, uh, I'm going to pray while I'm in the bed. How many know you can't really pray when you're in the bed? Because the bed is for sleeping. You know it and the bed know it. This is for sleeping. You can't fight from the bed. You got to fight on your knees. I'm not by myself. Y'all know y'all try. I tried it. I tried to pray in the bed. And you know what? I didn't even get a chance to fall asleep because God was like, so, 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 so you really going to lay down? Knowing what you need me to do? You can't, like the disciple, he said, you can't tarry for one hour? You can't pray from the bed. I don't know who that's for, but get up and get on your knees. You losing because you praying from the bed. You like, you like Joshua. The arms are down. And you losing. You think that just because you got in the bed to pray, I, at least I prayed. What happened for you? Tell me, sis. Did he come through? Am I talking to somebody today? You're going to have to put yourself through something. I know y'all ain't shouting, but you're going to have to put yourself through something. Put yourself through some trouble because the enemy is not playing. And when I think about how I need to fight the enemy for my son, I can't get in the, I can't get in the bed and pray for Hayden. It take me on my knees. I got to get on my knees. I got, you know what? And I have um, the ocean playing in the background. I set the atmosphere when I'm praying for my son. Because these kids need a strong prayer, don't they? You better set the atmosphere. Amen. He's a good kid, but, but I know the enemy wants him. I know the devil wants my kid. He don't just want mine. He wants yours too. So you got to get out of the bed and pray for them. Amen. It's going to take you on your knees praying for them. And if you can't get on your knees, walk your house. But you got to come out of your comfort so that you can get into the presence of God. If I'm so comfortable and cozy under these covers, I ain't really thinking about Hayden and what he's going through. I'm thinking about this next word I say. I might not get it out before I start snoring. Get out of the bed. I don't know why I'm here. Get out of your bed and get on your knees. My God. It ain't going to happen for you unless you pray. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Amen. This lets us know that we can't have a victory without prayer. Amen. Joshua and the troops alone were no match for the Amalekites. Amen. Because they just had that bodily exercise. He was willing. He was obedient. But when Moses' hands were down, they were losing. Amen. Amen. And in conclusion. Verse 15 says, and Moses built an altar 
and call the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi signified a divine victory. This was divine involvement. This was a divine victory. They came through because of God. It wasn't because they were strong, but it was because Moses was a prayer warrior and Joshua was obedient. How many know we're all in this together? It's going to take you and it's going to take me if we're going to fight this enemy. The enemy knows that if he can come in and cause division among the people of God, amen, the wall will never be built. Am I talking to somebody today? We'll never go to places that God has for us if we're bickering and fighting amongst each other. Look at your neighbor and say, we're all in this together. Tell them we're all in this together. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. I fight with you. You fight with me. Am I talking to somebody today? You may stand to your feet on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. And if something hurts you, it hurts me. And if I'm your friend, I know you have some connection with God because I don't have time to play with people who don't. You can't just trust yourself with people who don't know the Lord. It's like getting in the car with somebody who don't have a driver's license and never drove before in their life. You have to be crazy. You can't yoke up with people that don't have a prayer life. And you know when people have a prayer life because the Lord will rain on them from time to time. And from time to time, you're going to hear them talk about what they're going through, but how God brought them out. So, so you know, he ain't going to make, you are not going to be ignorant to whether or not they have a prayer life. I know my people have a prayer life. I see them go through, and I see them come out. But we're all in this together. If you are here today, and you do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, I'm asking that that's the first thing you do. Because he here is not a sinner's prayer. And the only way you're going to ever win, look at your neighbor and say, the only way you're going to ever win is if you accept him as your Lord and Savior. See, if you're thinking you can handle this all by yourself and on your own, I can't, did, you, did you understand when Moses' hands were down, they were losing. So if God is not on your side, you're losing. Now, I'm not calling you a loser. I'm saying you're losing. You are losing. If you can't, if you can't acknowledge that you are, your life is out of control and you don't have what it takes to get it back where it needs to be, then that means you need to give God your heart. You need to give God your life. That's the main reason why we come together is so that my brother and my sister will know how good God is. See, you don't know how good he is until you have joined his army. And then you may be here today and, and maybe you're going through and you need me because you've been praying. You need me to touch and agree with you. I'm touching and agreeing today. And when I say I'm touching and agreeing, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Whatever it is that you have before God, you prayed about it. And I'm going to agree with you. Maybe it's a financial need you're in. Maybe it's an unsaved loved one. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's healing in your body. How many know that God can do all of these things? I told you today, there is nothing impossible with God. All things are possible. Look at somebody and say, all things are possible to him that believe it. Do you believe that God is able to do what you need him to do? Do you know that God could lift up your bow down head and he could mend your broken heart? Do you know that there's not a bill that God cannot pay? And the scripture said, if he was hungry, he wouldn't tell us. He wouldn't have to tell us. Why? Because everything belongs to him. 
And he has absolutely everything that you need. God is everything. He's a brother. He's a father. He's a mender of broken hearts. He's our source and our sustainer. And the memorial that they that Moses said to set in order, Jehovah Nisi. That's a standard. The Lord lifted up a banner. That is victory. And Moses did this. He built this altar. He had, this, he had them build this altar so that Joshua and all the generations that would come next would know that this is what God did because of prayer. This is what God did because they were obedient. Moses held up his hands and Joshua, he went to battle. This is what God did. Jehovah Nisi. He's your banner. You can look at that and know that I already came out of this situation. Amen. And I know that this thing that I'm in right now, there is nothing too hard for God. He, if he did it before, he can do it again. And that might be your memorial to remind you of what God have done for you. Just look back over your life and see where God have brought you from. I hate the devil. Because I know somebody in here, you were doing good and then he brought a thought to your mind. And he took you 10 steps backwards. But I declare that if the Lord have brought you through anything, the devil can't take you back. You got to allow yourself to go back. I remember going through what I was going through. And it was so easy to remember the bad stuff. I wore that like a banner. Because I could look at what I had been through. And it would take me into a familiar emotion. Even though that emotion was tearing me up inside. It was familiar. I know it, 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 was, a, it was something that I could control. I'm over here now and I'm low and, and I can control this, but I don't know how to get out. But God came in one day and said, you, you always had the power to come out. You got to choose to stay where you are. And I allow God to bring me out of that situation. And I came to tell somebody today, the enemy tried it again. And you know what I had to say? If I go back into this, it's a conscious decision to go back. Because I don't have to. Because I don't, it, it don't even feel the same. Trying to go back into that thing don't even feel the same. So I'm going to stay out because God brought me out. And I came to tell you today, if you go back, if you let the enemy tell you what you used to be. And the things that happened to you in the past, those things don't hold you anymore. Because God brought you out of those things. He brought you out. So the enemy cannot fight you with that anymore. You got to allow the devil to do that. But I came to touch and agree with you today because I know that this line is full of people who want to come out. If you want to come out, put your hands together for Jesus. I came to agree with you on today. Going back into that old mindset, that old thought that I, I didn't have control and that the enemy was winning and that, that I was never going to come out of what I was going through. I can't go back. It don't even feel right to go back. I'm stronger than that. And I came to tell you today, you're stronger than what the enemy is telling you. I might be taking too much time, but I hate the devil because I know what I've been through. And I know how long I allowed the enemy to fight me with my situation. That I was never going to be whole. That I was going to stay a broken woman. And that God didn't want anything better for me. That this, is, this was my lot in life. I remember it so well. 
And when I think about how he tried to hold me, it angers me. And I came to tell you, you ought to get angry with the enemy. When he tried to take you back to where God had brought you from. And I'm going to pray and believe God with you. I don't know what your situation is, but I know who my God is. And I know he's able. And I want to tell you today, we're all in this together. I may not know what you're going through, but I know how the enemy fights. And he don't fight fair. He's, he's diabolical. And you got to get a hatred in your heart for the enemy. You got to hate him with everything in you. And when you don't like something, you stand up against that. I'm going to pray with these that are at the altar. I want you to pray at your seat because we're all in this together. If you want to see your brothers and your sisters delivered, if you want to see them set free today, I want you to pray because we're all in this together. I need, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I love you, I need you 
from my mouth. With words from my mouth. Thank I you, Jesus. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Why don't you bless God for such a great word? Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God a great praise. Hallelujah. We in this thing together. Glory to God. Give God a great praise for the woman of God. Such an old time word. We need each other. Glory to God. You know, I can't make it without you. And you can't make it without me. Glory to God. Whether you that prayer warrior or that one that fight the battle. We in this thing together. Glory to God. If I keep my hands up for you. Glory to God. While that one is out there on the battlefield. We do this thing together. Glory to God. How many know we do it better together? Oh, hallelujah. Woo. That's a great word. Glory to God. And you know what I really liked? When she said, get out that bed. Because you know they ain't doing nothing but talking to God. Get out that bed and get on your knees where you reverence God. And say, God, I need you. Glory to God. That's when you can lift your hands. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! That was a powerful word for me. Glory to God. You know, and I appreciate God. Come on, give God another great praise. For the great woman of God. I enjoy that word. Glory to God because we in this thing together. It's no time to fight one another. We fight that devil out there. We fight that devil out there. Glory to God. We love one another in here. Glory to God. And I'm so grateful to be a part of an organization. You know where we love each other. Glory to God. You know when I don't see you, I know you're praying for me. When I don't hear from you, you know, I know you praying for me. Because you know why? They love me. Glory to God. And when we love one another, you know what? I don't have to know if you, I don't see you today. All I know, I need to pray for her. I don't need details. I just know my, that's, that's out the norm. For my brothers and my sisters not to be here. So all we can do is pray for one another. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and just say, I need you. And you need me. And let's just stand back and watch how God changed things for us. Glory to God. Come on, give God a great praise, somebody. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what? The woman of God preached out of her heart. Glory to God, and you ought to shout if you receive that word that came from heaven. Why don't you put a praise on it? Why don't you put a praise on it? <laughs> Woo! Oh, hallelujah! Woo! Woo! Thank you. Glory to God! Oh, hallelujah! If you believe him, why don't you just praise him? Glory to God. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Hey. Glory to God. Just speaking on it. You don't have to think about everything. But just think on some things. Think on what God has done for you. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him, Sister Keisha. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the woman of God. 
being obedient. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I needed it. I needed this word. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead. <laughs> Woo. Go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him, sister. Go ahead and praise him, sister. Glory! That's it! Glory! Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Go ahead, brother! Go ahead! Oh, thank you! Thank you, Jesus! That's it! Ha ha ha! Thank God for the victory! Thank you for the victory! Go ahead and thank him for the victory. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. We got time to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Go ahead and praise him, somebody. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this place. We thank you for how you used the woman of God. Oh, God, to let us know and to remind us that we in this thing together. Oh God, I pray that you bless her. Bless the saints of God. Bless our leaders, God. As we hold them up. Oh God, we ask that you continue to strengthen them. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, grant the victory. Grant the victory, Lord God. To the people of God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Go ahead and praise them, somebody. Oh, hallelujah.